you've been uh, talking here at the ASH meeting on acute prolyomyelocytic leukemia, and in particular, <coughs> you've done an international retrospective study of uh, the predictors and the incidence of early death. Now, why were you particularly interested in that aspect of APL? So, uh, APL, as we all know, is a rare subtype of uh, acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, and um, the, the outcome of these uh, children with APL has actually improved a lot in the last uh, uh, 15, 20 years. Thanks uh, to things like ATRA. Exactly. With uh, ATRA and chemotherapy now, the 10-year event-free survival of these patients is around 80%. However, we still see a percentage of patients uh, between 4 and 7.5% uh, that suffer from early death in children. Uh, and uh, we uh, don't seem to uh, know exactly uh, what uh, are the exact predictors of early death in children with APL, uh, whereas we know that in adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so you conducted a study. What did you do? So we conducted an international retrospective study. Uh, we tried to look at the incidents and predictors of early death in childhood APL. Uh, and basically we um, asked several international groups from Europe, uh, Canada and the, and the US uh, to uh, we collect data from their centers. And uh, we collected data on the incidents and also on some uh, clinical treatment uh, features to see if we can determine predictors of early death. What aspects in particular did you focus in on? So we tried to look at uh, age, gender, uh, initial white blood cell count, uh, the uh, body mass index, uh, or the weight and height of the patient, uh, but also on biological features like the uh, platelet count, uh, the initial white blood cell count, some cytogenetic markers uh, like FLT3 ITD, uh, and uh, whether they received ATRA in induction uh, chemotherapy or not, uh, what other drugs they received in induction. Uh, and uh, so those are the, the main specific uh, things that we focused on. Quite a lot of variables there. Exactly. What did you find? So we, we uh, enrolled 707 children overall. Uh, and the incidence of early death was around 6.3%. So among 707 children, 45 had an early death. And early death, by the way, was defined as death within 60 days from presentation. And uh, among the patients who died, we found out that uh, ATRA uh, in induction was extremely important, which is not surprising. In fact, those who had uh, uh, not had ATRA in induction, the early death rate was 41%. And those who had ATRA during induction, the early death rate was only 5%. So that's a huge difference. So this actually confirms the importance of starting ATRA uh, and starting it as soon as possible. Now, how might you do that? I mean, it's very fascinating that ATRA, which itself was a, a, an amazing drug when it was found to work in uh, in this situation, but how do you get that earlier diagnosis, earlier treatment? So uh, the, the, the most uh, recent routine recommendations to, for APL is to start ATRA as soon as possible. Uh, the minute you look at the microscope and you suspect APL by morphology, uh, whether you're in children or in adults, then you should start ATRA. You should not wait for the molecular uh, test or the cytogenetic tests, which can sometimes take two to three days. So. Uh, and there have been other studies that have looked at the timing of ATRA uh, uh, starting from presentation uh, and it was found that if you start ATRA the first day, the early death uh, is, is close to 0%. If you start wow. it the next day, the early death goes to 35%. If you started the third day, the early death rate goes to 75%, but that's in adults. We tried to look at that in children. Unfortunately, we had so many missing data about the timing, so we could not uh, really determine that. But it was obvious that ATRA in induction certainly is extremely important. The other finding that we found that um, uh, we had 33 patients among uh, for, uh, 33 patients uh, among the whole total number had uh, central nervous system bleeding. And among those, only 15% of them survived. In other words, if you had a CNS bleed and you children with APL, there's an 85% chance of dying early on. Whereas if there was no 
uh, CNS bleed, the early death rate was only 2%. Is that something potentially you could control? So this is uh, an, an, an event that is uh, one of the most um, challenging things in APL, is, is to control early bleeding and thrombosis. Uh, what we need is really to try to optimize management of bleeding and thrombotic complications, especially in high-risk patients. And in APL, high risk is defi defined as anyone who comes through the door with a white cell count of more than 10,000. That's a high risk patient. So those patients are those who need to be more aggressively treated with transfusions and to optimize the coagulopathy to prevent bleeding. Okay, could you run me through, yeah. ideally, what the doctor should be doing the moment she or he uh, suspects APL? So the minute that they suspect APL by the morphology, they immediately should start ATRA uh, orally. So this is why there is That's a, without waiting for confirmation? No, just morphology is enough. Just give ATRA immediately. Uh, and uh, that's the first thing you have to do. So in fact, we I always suggest to have ATRA tablets in emergency departments or even on the inpatient ward. The second thing, they need to keep platelets above 50,000. They need to keep the fibrinogen above 1.5, so transfusing fresh frozen plasma or cryoprecipitate very aggressively. Uh, the anemia, the hemoglobin, they don't need to keep it above a certain level because actually if the white cell count is very high, you don't want the hemoglobin to be high because that will increase the risk of viscosity and will, that will increase the risk of stroke. Mm -hmm. So you need to transfuse platelets immediately, uh, FFP or fresh frozen plasma as soon as possible. At the same time, give ATRA as soon as possible. Any ideas about reducing the risk of CNS bleeding? So uh, this is, as I said, this is uh, a, a major problem in both adults and children. And uh, the way to, re to reduce it is by uh, doing these three things immediately. That hopefully will help. But unfortunately, there's a subset of patients that no matter what you do, uh, they die from CNS bleeding. Why? Because they may get to the hospital a bit late and, th and they may actually die before we start treatment with ATRA. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we had among the causes of early death, 60% uh, uh, of them were caused by CNS bleeding and um, it was about 28 patients and three of them actually uh, died before we started any treatment. So that's a, that's a big problem. The other problem is cerebral thrombosis. So not only bleeding, but thrombosis. And that's even more difficult to treat than bleeding. Extremely more difficult to treat because one of the treatments for thrombosis is to give uh, heparin, but at the same time heparin can cause bleeding. So it's, it's even more difficult to treat than bleeding. But both of them, they need to be tackled immediately especially in high-risk patients. Right, so what's the bottom line message then coming out of this for cancer doctors? So the bottom line message is that uh, bleeding and thrombosis are still uh, very uh, frequent in children with APL and we need to tackle them early on by starting ATRA and aggressive transfusion uh, immediately as soon as possible w without waiting for molecular and cytogenetic tests to come back. But we really need new drugs to counteract the coagulopathy. And we need prospective studies to study predictors of early death in childhood APL in the arsenic era.